Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, I want to say good afternoon to those of you who are joining me here on the East Coast. We're just past 12 noon Eastern time. I also want to say good morning to those of you who are joining us from the Central time zones, the Mountain time zones, or the Pacific time zones. And of course, we want to say good evening to any of you who are joining us from across the pond in parts of UK or parts of Europe and good early morning to any of you who are joining us from parts of Asia or parts of Australia. Welcome to today's presentation, a basic introduction to the Power Options suite of tools, although we will delve deep into some specifics of various options trades and uh, strategies that can be applied with Power Options. We're going to discuss the basic tips on navigating the site, and we're going to begin in just a few moments. We're going to allow some time for some of our attendees to join us here in the room as we just started the presentation. Now, I want to encourage all of you, uh, when you logged on to the presentation, a GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar platform should have appeared on your screen. Inside the GoToWebinar platform, there is a question pod, so at any time during the presentation, please feel free to send us a question, and uh, we'll make sure that we check that periodically and regularly to make sure that all questions get handled in a timely fashion based on the tools that we're reviewing or the concepts that we're discussing as well. Uh, so make sure that you take advantage of that uh, as we go through the presentation. Now, we want to begin this presentation uh, by discussing, discussing briefly what is Power Options. Well, Power Options is a patented suite of search and analysis tools designed for self-directed options investors. Our tools will allow you to search across the universe of options in over 23 of the most commonly used option strategies to help you quickly identify only those positions that match your personal risk-reward tolerance, your goals, and of course your expectations in a given strategy. Once you've identified the positions, you can quickly research the risk versus reward and further details of the stock and option as well. We also offer a powerful set of portfolio tools to help you paper trade, track, and manage and adjust your actual options trades. In addition to that, we of course offer countless educational articles, archived webinars, help videos, and help pages to help you get more familiar with the tools on the site and of course the various option strategies as well. Ernie Zarenner created these Power Options tools over 17 years ago to essentially trade his personal account, but everyone here at Power Options, myself included, uses these tools to trade their personal accounts. So we have many more years of combined trading experience. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Mike Chupka. I'm the Director of Education here at Power Options. I've had the great pleasure of working with Ernie Zarenner and the Power Options staff for about the past 11 going on 12 years. Uh, those of you that are currently on a free trial to Power Options or are subscribers, you know that you can schedule a free coaching session at any time. I handle most of the coaching sessions. Ernie handles those as well. Uh, I also handle a lot of the education and educational products that we have available on Power Options. Now, I mentioned that we support over 23 of the most commonly used option strategies. I am versed in all strategies on the site. However, I always want to be upfront and mention that there are certain strategies I have never traded in my personal account. Uh, things such as naked calls, selling a call without owning a long call or owning the stock for protection, uh, short straddles and short strangles, selling a call in a put, whether right both at the money or both out of the money, uh, and iron butterfly positions. And these strategies just don't match my personal risk reward tolerance. However, if you do have questions about those, please feel free to send them over during the presentation at any time. All right, well, all that being said, let's navigate over to the Power Options suite of tools, and let's just discuss some of the features that are available, and then we'll get down into the uh, nitty-gritty of the presentation as well. And make sure that the screen adjusted, there we go. All right, what we're looking at here is a basic uh, trial setup for a Power Options trial account. The Power Options tools are designed by a tab navigation system. We start off with the main home tab, which is always locked in place. Here you can access the free coaching session we discussed a moment ago. The Learning Center menu, uh, this is where there's uh, various uh, PDF articles, white papers, access to different webinars and different learning and educational materials as well. Some of our products, of course, are available in the Power Store. And if you need to make any changes to your account information, you can do so under the Home tab under the My Account link. I'm going to navigate very quickly over to the free webinars link that's located under the main home tab. On the free webinars page, you'll be able to, of course, access the live webinars as we're doing right now. We have a variety of presentations available for you, uh, things such as a basic introduction to power options, how do you find new trades, uh, accessing the portfolio tools, 
the market sentiment tool, which we'll discuss in just a moment, uh, how to search for new covered calls, looking for bull put credit spreads, buying options, and so forth. There's a lot of information here under just the Power Options Tools tab. In the Option Strategies tab, we have a few basic presentations. Uh, what is a vertical spread, managing spread positions, and protective option strategies. And under the Options Concepts tab, we'll see things such as discussions on implied volatility, the Greeks, insuring your stock directly or insuring your whole portfolio, uh, waiting to roll and roll out discussions. And then during our Friday presentations, the open discussion, we have a lot of different requested topics that are available. Some of these will be shorter presentations that just discuss a specific topic related to options trading. So at any time you want to view more education and more information, just make sure you take a look at the free webinars tab located right underneath our main home tab on your Power Options account. Now the My Portfolio tab, this is where we can access our active trades in the portfolio as we enter them into our portfolio tools. Uh, the Transactions view just shows us a historical trade listing of positions we may have closed or adjusted. Analysis view gives us a running tab based on stock symbol of all the positions that we have open or have closed or adjusted as well. We'll go through the portfolio later on in the presentation. Now the Signature Tools tab. The Power Options Signature Tools are designed for those of you that want to do a little bit more, maybe detailed research and analysis, but there are also very helpful tools available in this tab uh, for you to help you manage your trades or ensure your positions as well. Uh, the Volatility SKU, the first uh, signature tool that's available, this will allow you to put in a stock symbol and look out over time or across a specific expiration to see if there's a volatility skew or smile between your at the money options and your out or in the money options um, for any particular stock. Uh, the market sentiment tool, this is also available on the home tab as one of the various pods you can select. Uh, this shows us the current market sentiment based on 13 broad-based indicators and the historical data of those indicators over a six or seven year period. We set different fences across those uh, different uh, uh, variables there to show us whether we're in a bullish, bearish, or neutral sentiment. Now, right now, it looks like all of our current sentiments are neutral. Some are leaning towards bearish. For example, the put-call volume ratio. We can take a look at the details here. Here's a basic histogram of uh, the put-call ratio over the last five years and occurrences of different time frames. And we see that we're in the lower edge here, and we don't have a tendency to dip down lower into this range. So that's why we're leaning towards the bearish. If this turns further, we'll likely see this revert, the put call ratio revert, back towards 1 or back towards you know, 0.75 or 0.8, which would indicate a bearish market as it starts to move back up in that value. Um, but other indicators that are available, things such as the... Uh, Number of days the SPX has been up, number of days or the size of the gap over the SMA20, uh, number of total stocks, optional stocks over the SMA20, new stocks hitting a 52-week high and low. So there's a variety of different ratios, and these uh, fences that we've set, again, are based on the five- or six-year history of that particular criteria. You can also view the history, so go back in time and see when the last bearish indicator was and when the last bullish indicator was as well. So that's the basic market sentiment tool. It's something that Ernie and I use both in evaluating uh, timing for opening new positions uh, and adjusting our open positions as well. The spread chain tool, we'll probably discuss this later. The spread chain tool is a very useful tool for looking up spread positions, vertical spreads, debit spreads, or credit spreads, one stock at a time. And the long option finder, for those of you who are doing long uh, calls or long puts, what this tool does is allow you to put in your stock symbol, your expected price of the stock and a potential target date, and the tool will quickly calculate for you which long call or which long put would give you the best theoretical return based on your expectations. Now, our stock repair tool this is a very useful tool if you're holding stock right now that's currently down in price. What this tool will do is try to build a ratio call spread to help you get back to break even faster. Let's quickly run an uh, example. We'll go into the stock repair tool. And I'm going to put in that I own shares of Starbucks and that I purchased 100 shares of Starbucks at a cost basis of around $84 per share. I believe it's trading around $81 or $80 per share. So not a major loss. But right now we have a small loss on our shares of Starbucks. Let's go ahead and submit that. Okay, and what the tool did is we see here we have a variety of expiration dates. And it shows us the various lowest and highest stock price. But then it shows us some different strikes that it attempted to build a spread by buying January 2015 expiration, 
an 80.5 strike and selling 81 strikes for a net credit of 96 cents. However, this does not get us back to break even, so our break even column and the trade details column up here is not available. However, further down in February 2015, we see that we could buy an 80.5 strike, sell 82 and a half strikes. It only results in a net credit of eight cents, but we have a new break even of $82.21. Even though our cost basis was 84, the stock's trading around $80.50 now, I believe. We'd only need a gain of about $2 to get back to break even instead of needing a gain of $4. Let's take a look at the repair details here in the trade details section. And this gives us a breakdown of the ratio call repair. So we could potentially buy one call at the 80.5 strike for a total cost of 226. And we can sell, this is the 13th February expiration, two 82 and a half calls at $1.17. So we'd pay out 226, we'd get back 234, so we'd only receive a net credit of $8. However, if the stock is trading at about 82.21 on February 13th, our two short calls at 82.50s would expire worthless, and our long call would be worth $1.71. So our total loss on the position would be $1.79 from our original price now, remember, of 84. Stock's at 82.21, so we have a loss of $1.79. We could sell to close our call for $1.71. We keep the initial $0.08 cent net credit and sell to close our stock, and we're back to break even without needing that extra two-point gain. Of course, if you wanted to see this graphically, we could simply scroll back up to our trade listing, and we could click on the Analyze Trade feature, and this will give us a graphical interpretation of this potential repair. The ratio call spread, we see now that we'd be at break even right around 82.50, small profit of 0.7%, but it beats the loss of $2 that we'd have without the stock repair in place. So if you're currently holding a stock that is down in price from where you bought it, you might want to go into the Signature Tools tab, quickly navigate over to the Stock Repair tool, plug in your information, see if any repairs are available. The Insurance tool in our Signature Tools menu is sort of the opposite of the stock repair. If I actually have a stock that's up in price from where I bought it, the insurance tool will calculate for me potential put options I could buy to lock in most of that gain or create a collar to lock in most of that gain and still have a little bit of premium generation to the upside. Use Starbucks is the same example, but now let's put in a cost basis of $75 per share. And for the buy put month, we'll just leave it all months. We won't do anything with the call right now. We simply hit calculate. And we see that we have an unrealized profit of 7.9% roughly $5.91. Starbucks has moved up since I last looked at it this morning. It's currently at $80.91. So we could go out to March, about 58 days out. We could buy an 87 and a half put, maybe too deep in the money for my tastes, and it would cost us $7.55. So our new cost basis of the entire position, our $75 plus the $75 would be $82.55, but we're guaranteed to get $87.50 back. So we have a locked-in profit of $4.95, or roughly 6%. So this means whatever happens next, coming up to earnings, we're guaranteed to make 6% most of our unrealized profit, and if the stock collapses 15 or 20% due to a poor earnings, we're still guaranteed a profit. We wouldn't be looking at a loss. And again, if I want to see the graphical interpretation, simply use the More Information button next to any listing, whether you're in the search, search by symbol tools, or uh, even the stock repair or the long option finder, We'll click on Profit and Loss Chart, and we see here, even though we bought this deep in the money put, we're guaranteed to make that profit of 6%, even if the stock collapses down to $50 per share. If the stock gaps up, we could still realize more upside opportunity, and we could even now choose to sell a call, maybe at the 87.50 strike or higher, generate a little bit more premium, lock in a little bit more profit as well. So if you have a stock that's down in price, go into the Signature Tools tab, Check the stock repair, see if you can build a ratio call spread to help you get back to break even faster. If you have a stock that's up in price, check out the insurance tool to see how you can lock in most of your unrealized profit or perhaps create a collar to give you a little bit more premium generation while still locking in a lot of that profit as well. All right, now those three tabs are always locked in place. Now as we look at the main menu, we now see our strategy tabs. I have about five or six strategies selected 
remember I mentioned we do support over 23 of the commonly used option strategies. If you don't see a strategy available that you're interested in trading, for example, I don't have iron condors up here, I don't have calendar spreads, if this is a strategy you're interested in finding new trades for, doing research and analysis, simply click the Other Strategies tab, and this will allow you to customize your Strategy tab menu on the top of the screen, and we can add any of the strategies available on the left into our available strategies on the right. Before we go any further in today's presentation, I just want to launch one quick poll, and what I'd like to know, help us gear the presentation uh, for the remainder of the time that we have today, is what types of option strategies are you mainly trading? <coughs> Excuse me. Are you mainly looking at covered calls and naked put positions? Are you looking at the protective option strategies, married put trades, radioactive trades, and collar positions? Are you looking at uh, the vertical spreads, bear call credits, bull put credits, iron condors, for example, and your debit spreads? Are you mainly interested in call buying, uh, buying calls, buying puts, speculating on a market movement? Or are you currently focusing on the time spreads? And by time spreads, we mean the diagonal and horizontal spreads, sort of the different calendar spreads uh, that are available. All right, I've had the poll open for almost a minute. Uh, we've got over 60% of our audience has voted. If you haven't voted yet, I encourage you to do so. I'll leave this poll open for another 10 seconds or so. It looks like we're getting a couple more votes in, but the percentages aren't changing as much. Okay, so there's a few more adjustments there. All right, let me go ahead and close the poll, and I'm going to share the results uh, with everyone here. 53% of you are mainly doing covered calls and naked puts, sometimes what we call the gateway into options trading. 41% of you in second place are doing the vertical spreads, bear call credits, bull put credits, debit spreads, and condors. And a tie for third, 29% doing long calls, call buying, and put buying. And 29% of you are doing the protective option strategies. And close behind those, 24% doing the time spreads. Well, fantastic. Let me go ahead and hide that poll, hide those results, I should say. And what we're going to do now is just make some arrangements. Well, our winner today, of course, was covered calls and naked puts. I already have covered call selected, so let me just move it up to the top. I'm going to move naked put up as well. In second place, we have a vertical spreads. So I've got bull put credit, and I've got bear call credit as well. And if we chose to, we could add iron condors. I'm going to go ahead and remove the debit spread for the time being. Next, we had long calls. So, okay, let's move the married put down a little bit here. Let's move the married put and the custom spreads down. There we go. Sorry about that, folks. I moved the custom spreads down. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. So next we had our long calls and long puts. So now over on the menu, let me just add long call. Put that in tab number five. Move the married puts over to tab number six. And then, of course, we want to select calendar spreads. So I'll add calendar calls for those of you that are doing time spreads. I'm going to leave the custom spreads in there for tab number eight. Now that I have my configuration set, we'll just scroll down to the bottom and click Save Configuration. And we notice up at the top, we've changed where we now have the covered call, naked put, our spread positions, and so forth. All right, well, let's go into the covered call menu. What we're going to do is we're going to spend some time on each of our strategies that were voted on today. I'm going to talk briefly about how to use the Power Options tools to identify a position in that given strategy, one stock at a time, and then we're also going to look in each strategy at using the search tool to evaluate potential trades based on your personal criteria and what you want to look to identify. When you first click on any strategy tab, you'll be taken to the strategy home page. And all the strategy home pages will look very similar. Over on the right, you'll just have a basic profit and loss chart for your position. For covered calls and naked puts, we have the same risk reward profile. We have a limited upside at the initial trade, and we're still risking perhaps 97 or 98 percent of what we invested in the stock position in case if the stock goes bankrupt if there's a major draw. So we're looking to make maybe two and a half to three percent on the upside, and you're probably using a stop order perhaps uh, to help you get out of trouble, which doesn't always work. We might be setting a stop order at eight percent, but it's always key to remember you're still risking a large amount if there's a sudden decline. Okay, now over on the left, you'll have a basic overview pod for every strategy. This will just give you a few bullet points and a link to a more detailed strategy help page. So if you're just getting started out moving into credit spreads, when you click on bull put credit, you can go through those uh, first few tips there, the detailed strategy help page. 
Underneath of the overview pod, you'll see the tools pod, and this gives you a brief description of each of the tools available for that particular strategy. You can also use the quick navigation tabs to access any of the tools in a given strategy. You want to go to the option find, the basic search, the sample searches, but here in the tools pod you get a brief description of what each tool is and how to use it. All right, okay, so down further below, underneath the tools pod, you'll have, in every strategy you'll have a learning center. This may consist of white papers, uh, links to the various webinars that we have, or help videos for getting more familiar with that strategy and the tools on the site for that strategy as well. All right, so starting off with covered calls, let's talk about how I would use power options to open a covered call one stock at a time. Okay, so there, there are a few tools that we can use here for identifying positions one stock at a time. For covered calls, we have the quick find tool, the search by symbol, and the option chain. Quick find tool is a very basic view. Um, it's very helpful and it's very quick. So when we click on the quick find tool, we'll just be prompted to enter in our stock. Let's stick with Starbucks for this afternoon's presentation. A number of shares, 100, and then we can enter a basic sentiment. Are we neutral, are we more bullish, or are we more bearish? I'm gonna go ahead and stick with neutral for the time being, and then we're gonna click what's called get the money on the table report. So with Starbucks currently trading at about $80.91 per share, we see down below some basic information that we could, oh, sorry folks, let me adjust that a little bit. We could generate $178 in profit right now by simply selling the February 81 20th standard expiration 81.50 call. If the stock is trading above 81.50, of course, our max profit is 237, and this gives us a downside protection of 2.2%. So if I bought the stock today, sold the call, we'd take 178 in right now, we'd have a max profit of 237, and we have a 2.2% downside protection. If we want it to be more neutral, more of an out of the money, higher time premium, we could sell the at the money 81 call, generate 202 in premium right now for 100 shares. Max potential is a little higher, $211 and a 2.5% downside protection. And if we wanted to be safer, we could go more in the money. We could take in $229 now by selling the 80.5 strike and that would give us $188 maximum profit because we are giving up 40 cents or so of intrinsic value between the current price of the stock and the strike price. This gives us a better downside protection, <laughs> excuse me, but we are giving up some return. Okay, so that's just the quick find view for the covered call. If you wanted to see more details, if you wanted to see more data for your covered call position, we could use the search by symbol tool. I don't really tend to use this for my covered calls or for my naked put positions if I'm looking for positions one stock at a time. But the advantage of the uh, search by symbol tool is that we can put in multiple stocks. So we could put in Starbucks, uh, I could put in BCC, uh, Boise Cascade, a particular position I'm in right now. We could put in Netflix, Amazon, and so forth. And we can select our expiration date. Let's just go to standard February expiration and submit these symbols. Now the search by symbol tool for covered calls and naked puts is a holdover from an older tool we used to have called the one strike tool. And what this does is shows us one strike in the money and one strike out of the money. So let's just focus on Starbucks down here at the bottom that we looked at before. We saw some of this information already on the quick find tool. We could sell the 81 strike call for $2.02. That gives us a 2.5% downside protection and a max return if assigned of 2.7%. But now we have some more information. We can select things such as the theoretical probability that we'd be assigned the current volume, open interest, uh, dividend for the stock, and a lot of other information that we can view and select to view in the Choose Columns feature. And of course, we also see our slightly in the money call, the 80.5 strike at 229, that higher downside protection of 2.8%, but a lower percent, a lower max return if assigned of only 2.4% as well. Okay. Um, so that uh, just allows you to do the comparison, but it doesn't give you the multiple strikes. It just shows you the availability of um, the one strike in the money and the one strike out of the money. Now, 
My preference, if I'm looking at new covered call positions one stock at a time, I prefer to use the option chain. So I can access the chain up at the top here by just typing in a symbol and clicking chain. But if I know I'm doing covered calls, it's easier just to access the chain underneath the main menu, put in our symbol, and click on get chain. Now the power options chain, what we show you on the call chain is we can toggle between the small, medium, and large chain depending on how many strikes you want to see. We can again select the different expiration dates for the different weekly options, standard expiration for February, March, April, and so forth. If I stick with the uh, February series, let's just go with the 13th here, we see the available strikes. And of course, we know the stock's now at $80.99. It's continuing to move up in price. However, when we see the at the money break here, those that are listed in the money and those that are listed out of the money with a different shading. But the advantage of the power options option chain for calls is that we're showing you the same criteria that would be important to us if we were opening this covered call position. You have your downside protection, shaded column, your percent return if unchanged if entered as a covered call, and your percent if assigned. As before, we can click on that choose columns menu to add more information. Things that I've selected, of course, we see the percent time value, percent range in the money, probability, and the annualized percent if assigned and if unchanged as well. So you can select a variety of different option data and option criteria. For a smaller stock, and something that doesn't offer a very strikes, the 50 cent strike differences, for example, let's do BCC, which actually only offers standard expirations. It does not offer weeklies. We can easily see a quick view if we were purchasing the stock today at 39.29. Well, this uh, in the money call, it looks like for February, expir oh, I'm sorry, this is July. My apologies, folks, it's way out in time. We don't want that. We want standard February 20th, much better. So we could go with the, not much choice here, but we could go with a 35 strike deep in the money for somewhere between 4.30 and $5, and we'd get a very high downside protection, but little or no percent return if assigned. So that's not gonna cut it. In this case, the easiest choice here would be to sell the 40 strike call slightly out of the money, probably look for a premium of about $1.20, which would give us at least a 2.7% downside protection and a potential 4.6% return if assigned. And if I was really bullish, you might consider the 45, but at these premiums, it's probably not worth your value. So that's how the chain can really help you narrow down these positions and the opportunities for covered calls one stock at a time. Now, John has a question that came in. This is more related to the search tool, which we'll go into right now. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate over under our covered call tab to the search tool. And the search tool available in any strategy is our patented tool, which you allow you to identify potential covered call positions based on your specific criteria. And John wants to know, on deep in the money covered call positions, is there a way to see the likelihood that you're going to be assigned early for a stock that has an ex-dividend date before the expiration? To tell you the truth, John, there is no way of knowing. And the assumption is you have a pretty high chance of getting assigned early. Let's say I sold a February call today, slightly in the money on a given stock, and the ex-dividend date is coming out on January 28th, for example. Well, if I'm three or four points in the money on a $30 stock and I've got the ex-dividend date coming up, I'd pretty much assume that I'm going to get assigned early. I might not. I've had uh, experiences where I've been in the money by a few points, uh, had about 30 days, 20 days to go to expiration. The ex-dividend day came out. I had a few hundred shares and a few contracts, and um, I was assigned on half of them. I had six, uh, 600 shares and six calls. Three of them got called early, and I was still holding a position that was still deep in the money with 300 shares and three calls that expired the next month. Yeah, give and take. You don't know. Uh, sometimes I've been called assigned early with an out-of-the-money option. I was trading Kraft a few years ago. Kraft was trading at around uh, $32 per share. It was at $32.40, I think. I had a $32.50 strike call sold against it. Ex-dividend day came out. The dividend, I think, was $0.20. Cents. I was $0.10 cents out of the money. I got assigned. Uh, the person who owned the call wanted to take advantage of the difference there. Getting that extra $0.10 cents they felt was more beneficial. Uh, so they went ahead and purchased the stock, and the market maker did the first in, first out basis. My shares were assigned. I didn't get the dividend, but I got the $32.50. Now, all that being said, very quickly, um, when you set your positions in the portfolio, I'm going to skip here. We're going to go back to the portfolio tools or go into the portfolio tools. 
uh, these are uh, some collar trades that are listed, but anytime I list a trade, a covered call or a married put, anything like that in my portfolio, you'll be able to set a variety of different alerts for the underlying stock price, the option price, um, and also various things such as the days remaining till earnings. So if I'm coming up to earnings in three to five days, I want to be notified if I want to make an adjustment, maybe add a put option to ensure my covered call position or roll my call to allow for more upside before the earnings or the days remaining till ex-dividend. So if I'm in a long-term holding, a core holding in my account, and I have multiple shares, I don't want to get assigned, I'm right at the money, ex-dividend's coming up in two or three days, I may look to roll that call out to a higher strike and maybe a little bit further out in time, stay in the position and keep collecting the dividend. And if I'm already deep in the money, well, maybe I just want to let it get assigned, I'm okay with that. Um, going a little bit off track here, but I just want to mention a few years ago, John, maybe two years ago, maybe within the last two years, uh, we had a Power Options customer uh, let us know that he had been working on a strategy where he was opening new covered call positions within three days to uh, an ex-dividend date, and he was opening calls that were just one month out to expiration. And he was trying to go one or two strikes in the money with the ex-dividend date coming up in one or two days, and he felt confident that he would get assigned early on most of those positions to get a decent return within two or three days. Of course, with the advent of the weekly options and over 420 some odd securities offering weekly options now and continuous weekly series, it's much easier to try to get a decent return over a two, three, or five day period. Um, but, you know, we tried this strategy, we, we looked at some of his views, and we found in real world practice it didn't work as well as he was claiming. So if you get assigned, great, you make a small profit because it was deep in the money and most of the dividend paying stocks don't have a lot of volatility. Um, and at the same time, if you stayed in the position, well, your return was low. It was only 0.5 or 0.6%, even though you got the dividend for that one payment. So we didn't think the trade-off was really worth it. Um, but he's been doing that for a while. He's been doing really well. Uh, but I just didn't think it worked out in practice for a retail investor. Okay. So now in any strategy, when you go into the search tool, the first thing that you'll see is a list of potential trades. Now these are not direct recommendations or suggestions. The listed trades you see when you go into any search are based on a default criteria set or perhaps one of your saved searches that you created uh, when you're going through the various tools. So when I go into covered calls, I may have started off with the broker and advisor recommended and the basic initial value screen, whatever search you last looked at. If you're interested in weekly covered calls or naked puts, in the search settings saved as field underneath the listed trades, you'll see a default available for a weekly covered call screen that you can customize to match your own personal needs. Let's say that we were interested in looking at weekly covered calls. I'm going to go ahead and pull up that default search. We see a listing of 20 potential trades on the first page, and I'm sorting my results by percent return if unchanged. So if the stock stays at the same price, looking at the highest percent if unchanged to lowest. Well, if my first page results only shows me the top 20 results, but there's a total of 110 available. Now, right now, this list is too much. Again, we're not making a recommendation or suggestion. Anytime I start a new search in Power Options or I use the default search, I want to adjust the criteria so I have a nice manageable list of maybe only 20 or 30 or 40 positions that best suit my risk reward tolerance. Well, we started off with this weekly covered call screen. What we want to do is scroll down below the listed trades, and over on the right of the parameter field, we see the basic categories of the active filters that are currently being used. There are four different sections. There's options criteria that you can enter, technicals, stock technicals that you can enter as well, uh, stock fundamentals, and if you wanted to screen against a specific stock list, such as maybe an IBD list or a standard and poor's list, for example, value line list, you just wanted to screen for ETFs or avoid leveraged ETFs, we could do that in the list section. If you wanted to create your own personal list, you have a listing of 20 to 30 stocks that you follow on a general basis, you can go into the lists tab, create your own personal list, and just screen for covered calls against those lists. You can also import or just copy and paste the list if you have another service that selects uh, stock selections, for example. Okay, but let's take a look at what we're talking about here. For this particular screen, our active filters is naturally we're looking at a time frame between two to 10 days out in time. For implied volatility, yeah, we want to see a little bit of implied volatility there, so we're focusing uh, the positions, the calls, to have at least an implied volatility of 20% or 0.20. The downside protection, 
we talked about this earlier, this is based on the premium you receive, it's showing you how far the stock can drop before you're technically losing money on the position. So we're looking for a minimum downside protection of 0.5%, a minimum return if unchanged of 0.6%. We want to see some just basic volume and open interest greater than zero. For our stock technicals, we're looking for an average stock volume of 500,000 shares, meaning that over the last 90 days, the stock has to trade at least 500,000 shares on average per day. And we're also looking for stocks that are trading above their SMA 20. We're looking for a stock price between 50 and $200, and we want an earnings per share growth of greater than 5%. So we want to see stocks that have grown in earnings 5% from last year to this year, and we're avoiding stocks that have an earnings date between now and expiration. We don't want to be in a covered call and that stock that has poor earnings and drops 33% of its value, even if we're using an 8% stop loss, when that gap happens, we get filled at the worst possible price, we still lose 33% on our position, minus maybe the 0.5 or 0.6% premium we collected. If you've got a 34 or 35% loss on your position, or 33% loss even on your position, you're going to need at least a 50% gain on your next position to get back to break even. Those kind of losses will kill a covered call portfolio or a naked put portfolio as well. All right, so now that we've talked about the active filters, let's talk about what's available. Now we see here our options tab, and then we have our stock technicals and fundamentals. We already talked about the time frame. Well, that's what we'd want to set for a weekly option. We want to look just two to 10 days out in time. We keep the implied volatility. If you have a preference, you want to see a higher potential percent return if assigned or a higher downside protection, simply click in those fields and let me try to force it to go at least to a 1% downside protection and a minimum 1% return if assigned. A key here for adjusting the criteria in the search tool in any strategy is once you've used one of the main screens as a stepping stone, only change one or two criteria at a time. So I've, I've increased my downside protection to be at least 1%, my percent if unchanged to be 1% as well, I want to submit these filters now, because if I go ahead and keep changing criteria and I enter 20 different criteria and I run the search, it's possible I'll get no results. Okay? I don't want to do too much at once because I won't know which filter really narrowed that down to where I had no results that matched my criteria. Here what we've managed to do by making that small adjustment is we've narrowed down our results to 77. Not really cut it in half, but came close. So we're getting closer to our desired goal here of a manageable list of opportunities. So we'll scroll further down here. If you had a specific range that you just wanted to look in the money to have a higher probability of being assigned, just get out of the trade in the next seven days or so, take that profit and move into the next position, we could tell the system we want to be at least, uh, let's say, 0.5% in the money. Normally, I might look for 2 or 3% in the money if I'm doing a 30-day trade, but when you're using the weekly options, you've got to give up maybe about a fourth of your expectations for profit, return if assigned, uh, minimum premium that you'd look for in a standard 30-day or standard expiration position. So let's go 0.5% in the money. Let's go ahead and submit that, see if we narrow this down any further. 31. Now we've cut it basically in half. Okay? But one of the other things that I might have changed first, and I always recommend this to our customers who are doing the radioactive trading positions, cash secured naked puts, covered calls, um, collar spreads, for example, in this particular position, we were looking at stocks between $50 and $200 per share. Well, I don't know your account size, but I know mine. These are filters that we've tested that feel, we feel work really well. However, if my account size dictates that when purchasing the stock, doing a cash-secured naked put, a married put, or a collar position where I'm buying stock, I should only be buying stocks between maybe $10 to $75 per share. Well, I'll just navigate over to the fundamentals here, and I'm going to make that change. I'm going to go 10 $75 per share. Let's go ahead and submit that. This opens it up a little bit more to those stocks at the lower price range, but it narrows it down to the upside, and we've got 39 total results now. And of course, other things that you might want to change is uh, if you have a minimum requirement for your option premium. This goes again to account size. If doing these kind of uh, positions that require you to purchase stock, uh, purchase uh, or cash secured positions in a naked put, excuse me. Well, you know that you might be only trading two to 300 shares based on your account size, so you know to make it worth your while with commissions, if you're doing a weekly series, which are naturally going to have a lower premium, you need to make sure that you're collecting at least 50 cents or 60 cents in premium. Well, I could put that into the option bid price as well, and let's go ahead and submit that. 
Okay, so we took this down to 36. We only removed uh, three of those positions as well. Now, I do have a couple of duplicates. And what I mean by that is we take a look at some of our results here. We have Amberella trading at 59.57. We could sell the slightly in the money 59 call for the 30th of January, nine days out in time for 250. This gives me a 4.2% downside protection and 3.4% return. Really strong. Uh, Amberella, of course, has a lot of a decent amount of volatility uh, due to recent news. But then we also have the 58 strike, which doesn't give us as much percent return if assigned because it's a little bit more downside protection. And of course, the 57 and a half strike, because we have 50 cent strike options available. And on page two, we might see the other option that's missing here, probably the 58 and a half or the 58 strike would probably give us what we were looking for as well, just not as high as a return. The reason I point this out is that one thing that you can do, we're sorting by, remember, percent return if unchanged. I do have a checkbox here to choose just one result per security. So however I'm sorting it, it would show me the highest one. I want to remove the duplicates and just see the highest one for those that match it. Let's go ahead and submit this. And again, with a percent if unchanged 3.4%, we see the Amberella 59 strike call for next week offering the highest percent if unchanged. So that one remained. All the other duplicates are gone, and we just have the 18 total results that are available. I'm going to uncheck that for the time being and resubmit the search. And I'm going to talk about why in just a moment. Okay, so we talked about some things you might want to change. However, there's a variety of other criteria that you could use. The percent probability assigned, for example. The bid ask spread or percent bid ask spread. If you wanted to look for a lower bid ask spread, monetarily or percentage. Things such as delta, of course. Uh, option volume today, if you wanted to make sure that you're only trading positions that traded at least 100 contracts today or 50 contracts today, or if you want to increase the open interest. Those are some of the other filters you'll be able to use in every strategy in the options tab. What's available in the stock technicals? Well, we are using the average stock volume. This is measured in thousands, so if I wanted to look at a position that only traded at least a million shares per day on average of the last 90 days, I would just change my average stock volume filter from 500 to 1,000. Things such as the RSI, the Relative Strength Index, Average Broker Recommendation, Beta, Bollinger Band and Bollinger Band Ranges. I'll talk about where you can find some more information about how we use those filters in just a moment. Uh, the Simple Moving Average. Since we're doing weeklies, we've selected a look at the stock price to be trading above the SMA 20. If you're doing further out positions, you can look for stocks above the SMA 50 or SMA 100 or stocks where the 50-day moving average is above the 100 as well. We also have a MACD filter that you can use if you use that as part of your stock analysis to help you filter down the results and have just a good handful of trades that match your criteria. Under the stock fundamentals, well, we have the stock price that we saw. If you specifically wanted to screen for dividend-paying stocks, you only wanted to look for mid to large cap stocks, we could use the market cap field as well. Uh, things such as price to book, price to sales, earnings per share growth, price to earnings, and we can choose specifically to look for stocks that do or do not have an earnings date between now and expiration, as well as the ex-dividend date. Okay, so we can really customize this based on specifics of what we want to see. And then lastly, we talked about the lists field. Well, we can choose to screen against a particular sector or industry, or I can choose to exclude a particular sector industry, if I wanted to move things such as healthcare or uh, energy stocks, for example, we could do that also. In the list field, we have a variety of different lists that have created. One of the pods that's available in the main home tab, you can put in a watch list, a three watch list for the stocks that you're trading or tracking, for example. Once you populate that watch list, it will be available for you to screen against in any strategy. Uh, we could screen just against indexes and ETFs. Um, Things such as the uh, Dow 30 industrials, stocks with earnings coming up, IBD 50, IBD 50 and CanSlim lists, NASDAQ 100, the S&P 500, value line lists, and again, you can also create your own personal stock list to just screen against those in any particular strategy as well. Now, all that being said, I'll review something real quick and then we'll go through real quick some of the other features that are available and some of the other tools. I'm sorry, other strategies that were selected. <clears throat> but real quick, if you have a specific filter that you're looking for, 
and you want to create your own personal search, well, this tool gives you the flexibility to do it, but you also want to make sure that you keep some things in mind. For example, let's say that I want to look for covered call positions, weekly covered call positions, that offer at least $2 in premium. Okay, well, that's, that's a, a rough schedule. I mean, that might be something difficult to find, but if they're available, this tool will find it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Clear Filters. We're going to go into the Options tab, and I'm going to leave my option expiration time frame at all months, but I could choose a standard expiration, for example, uh, if I wanted to. We're going to leave this at all months, and I'm going to go ahead and put in two to ten days out in time. Okay, so that focuses for our next weekly series. It's one week out in time. And I'm going to put in my option premium of at least $2. And let's add a little bit of volume, okay? I only want to see positions that trade at least 10 contracts a day and have an open interest of at least 100. Let's go ahead and submit that. Okay, is that uh, Robert? Robert, I'll get to your question in just a moment. We'll go back to trade comparison because uh, we mentioned the parity trade view in just a moment. Okay, so here, <clears throat> excuse me, folks, I apologize. We see a long list of trades. We have 282 total results, but some of these positions might not match specifically what I'm looking for. And what I mean by that is that we do see a high percentage return and downside protection. We've got a lot of these VIX short-term ETFs. We've got Yahoo in there, the three times uh, bull and bear ETF. Uh, there's an out-of-the-money position. Here's an in-the-money covered call position. We've got some good returns. But if we go to the final page, I'm going to go to page six here uh, for our available results. What we didn't specify, let's go to nine. Let's go to keep going for a little bit here. I just want to show you something. What we didn't specify is just setting a result for a covered call opportunity with at least a $2 net premium. We'll find a lot of positions that are deep in the money, but may not offer the return that you want. And here's Slumber's Day. It's way down on the list because of our sort. But we're buying stock at 82.31. We sold the could sell the 80 call for 285, so we get a 55 cent or 54 cent profit because of the intrinsic value. It's only 0.7 percent. Believe me, that's not bad for a nine-day trade. But what are some of the other issues that we're going to come across? Well, we may not want to be doing out-of-the-money calls. We may not want to be doing in-the-money covered calls. We may have that requirement again where we want at least a 1% downside protection and that minimum 1% return if assigned. Also, I highly recommend this. You always want to do your due diligence and verify this. But if I'm doing a covered call position, a naked put, credit spread, condor, anything like that on a standard stock, I am going to want to make sure that I don't have earnings between now and expiration. And of course, you may want to look for stocks that have a positive earnings growth, and of course, they're trading in an uptrend. But let's just make those subtle changes there. Increase the downside protection. You see here in our active filters now highlighted in red because we've made an adjustment but haven't uh, submitted it yet, and not between now and expiration. So let's go ahead and submit that. We take our list down to 48 results. See, that's much more manageable. This tool will allow you to find just those positions if you have a specific requirement. For example, if I want to see stocks that paid a 4% dividend, we could run a search for that for February expiration. But now I want to clarify if I want to be you know, right in the money or out of the money. Otherwise, the system will just show me this, every stock that has at least a 4% dividend and every strike that's available in my results because I didn't specify that, hey, I want at least this minimum return, this minimum option premium. And of course, here we see a lot of these are these three times and short term and leveraged ETFs. Okay, well, let's take care of that. I'm not a fan of trading those. If you're more aggressive and you like to enter those positions, that's great. What I'm going to do is go ahead and go into the exclude function on our list field. And I'm going to go ahead and exclude the uh, leveraged ETFs. I don't want to see any of these ultra two times, three times, three times bold, three times bear. So let me do that and go ahead and submit it. Now, we still have the short-term VIX ETF and the VXX, of course, because those aren't uh, leverage ETFs. But now we're down to GoPro, Tesla, EOG, GMCR, which we'd expect, of course, things that have a little bit more volatility. And again, we're down to that nice, manageable list of results uh, that we can go through more quickly. And I can even further uh, go through this further. We could remove all ETNs and ETFs as well, probably take us down to about 30 results total. Now, once we've identified a position, once we have our list of trades, I don't want to take the first one. Let's assume that I did remove all of our ETFs and ETN, and the first one on the list is ISIS Pharmaceuticals. Has the downside protection I want, 2.9% for nine-day trade, and a potential 3.4% return if assigned as well, 
But before I go any further, I'm going to have to do a little bit more research and analysis. I want to take a look at the stock chart. I want to make sure the stock is going in a trend that matches my strategy. For here, for a covered call, I want to see something that's neutral to bullish. I want to take a look at the company information and news. I want to be familiar with what does this company do. I want to take a look at the profile. I might want to take a look at the last earnings and events. And I may want to scroll through the last uh, headlines, recent headlines, see if there's anything that might cause me hesitation for entering this position. Of course, we could look at the stock research tool just to get a quick view of the uh, available data for things such as simple moving average, Black-Scholes values, volatility ranges, um, dividend date, earnings date coming up, and so forth, average stock volume. And we can do further research and analysis. We want to use that more information button. You really want to get familiar with that and how we use it to enter a new position with further research and analysis. Now Robert's question that came in, let me go back, I'm going to do two things very quickly. We're going to go back to our standard weekly covered call screen. And we're going to make those subtle changes that we mentioned before. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and um, change this to one to one. I believe that was our range. One there and percent if unchanged, at least one percent. I want to go into the fundamentals of course. I'm going to change my stock price range again to be between let's say $15 and uh, $70 per share. Oh, is Ambrella in that range, or is it above 70? I forgot. Okay, no, we're in that good range. All right. <clears throat> so here we have our covered call opportunities that we saw before. We have our listings here for AMBA, the 59.50, the 59 strike, of course, with the stock at 59.58, uh, 60.5 strike, and so forth. Uh, 61, still going further out of the money. Robert's question, of course, was how can I compare this? What would the cost be for the out-of-the-money put at approximately the break-even price of 57? Okay, uh, to the covered call structure. All right, well, let's take a look. For me, the easiest way to compare a covered call versus naked put, or if you want to compare your at or slightly out of the money covered call to the return that you'd make on the naked put, is we're just going to go back into the option chain, and we'll put in uh, Amberella, AMBA. And I could have just used the more information button, Robert, of course, to link to the chain. But now that I'm in the change, chain, I'm going to change this. Okay, there's two days left to January 23rd. First off, we're going to go to January 30th. That was our nine-day out trade. I'm going to change my view to calls and puts together. And we've got the small chain, which is going to be perfect uh, for our examples. Okay, now, what we have here is let me draw a line in the sand, a line in the middle, for lack of a better term. So right between here. This is our break between the call data and the put data. To make this more simple, uh, for our needs, Robert, to show you how I would do it, I'm going to customize our chain again using that Choose Columns feature. When you click on the Choose Columns feature in any strategy or in any tool, you have a listing of your call information and your put information. If I was in the search, I'd have a list of my stock information and my option information. You can pick and choose and customize which data columns you want to view in your search or on your view. Well, I need the option strike price, that's true. Call bid, call ask, okay, we'll take that. Volume and open interest will leave. I'm going to remove implied volatility. It's not important for me right now. I want the percent downside protection. Oh, sorry, my max percent return if assigned. And I'm also going to want the percent time value. Uh, probability above and below will leave in, uh, but I'm going to go ahead, since you're looking at specific strikes, I'm going to remove the percent range in the money. Now, what am I going to compare that to? For my put information, well, I need the strike price. Got that. Option bid. Option ask, we'll leave that. Volume and open interest, we'll leave. We'll take out implied volatility. Downside protection, no, I'm going to take that out and instead for a naked put, I want to see the percent to break even. And I also want to see the percent time value, but I also want to see my range in the money that we've got. More important for the put, I want to see the percent naked yield. Okay, so that's what we're going to use to analyze the two. Let me go ahead and submit that. It'll prompt me to close the window so we can refresh the page to see our available data. All right, so we were looking at some of the slightly in the money covered calls that we're hoping would uh, maybe potentially get assigned. So we have the 59 strike for our nine days remaining, uh, 250 to 290 bid ask, a potential 3.4% if assigned, and uh, let me scroll up a little bit, folks. I apologize here. Okay, here we go. It's a little bit better. We can actually see the columns now. All right, so here's our. 59 strike, 4.2%. We've got a 54.2% chance that will be assigned with a 3.2% time premium. We want to compare this to your 52 strike. We've got a 120 to 170 
uh, bid ask, no volume today, open interest of only 10 contracts. This would give us a 6.3% to break even. So the comparison here for our covered call in the call chain, 4.2%. This shows us the stock could fall. If we sold our 59 call, the stock could fall 4.2% before we're technically losing one of the money on the covered call. Whereas in comparison, the put option could drop, the stock could drop 6.3%. However, we could probably arrange this a little bit differently. But as we scroll over, here we're looking at a 3.4% max return if assigned to stocks above the strike price, as opposed to only the, I'm sorry, 2.1% yield if the stock is trading above 57 at expiration. Of course, the probability is much higher as well. So with the naked put, you're looking at a 2% with a 68.3% probability uh, and a 6.3% to break even. Whereas that 59 strike, we had a 3.4% max return, a 4.2% downside protection. So it's more than double the return, only 4.2% protection, but a 54.2% probability. When looking at the two directly, you don't see a lot of difference. The 57 strike, it's $2 in the money, almost $3 in the money, $2.50 in the money, is at $3.40 to $4.60. We're looking at a 5.7% downside protection, a 1.5% return if assigned for the 57 strike covered call. There's our probability, 1.4% time value. All right, so well, in comparison, we scroll across and look at the 57, it's a 2.1% naked yield, same probability, and we have 6.3% percent percent to break even. Uh, so in this case, to be honest with you, I'd be more tempted to go with the cash secured naked put at the 57 strike than with the covered call of time premium. 2% for the put, 1.4% for the in the money covered call. So in this parity trade, I'm going to be tempted to go more with a cash secured naked put as opposed to the covered call. Of course, there are ways that we could see this um, graphically as well. If you just went into the custom spread tool at any time, you can build a position on the fly or this is where the profit and loss chart goes when you click that from the search. So on the fly, let's do AMBA, uh, add the stock, let's just put in 100 shares at the current price. Now we'll go into view options. I want the nine day out January 30th expiration. We'd sell the 57 strike call, we looked at that in the money, 340 to 460. If I just submit it now, of course, it'll use the natural bid price at 340. But if I feel that I could get closer to that midpoint there, I'll let it maybe 50 cents more at 390, this might give us a better view. So I'm going to put in my specifics for that 57 call. Let's go ahead and sell that. So here's that better return. It's up to 2.4% almost equal, assuming we can get the midpoint pricing. There's the risk reward profile for a covered call. Of course, if the stock stays above 57, we make the maximum profit. Our break even. 55.68, so that was uh, roughly that uh, three, I'm sorry, 5% or so, 6% downside protection for our covered call. And if uh, real quick on the fly, I want to compare it graphically again. Remember, $132 maximum profit, we use sort of the midpoint pricing, which is a 2.4% if assigned, and our break even is at 55.68. Let me go ahead and clear these two out. We'll do just what we did before, view options, select our expiration, January 30th, our 57 put, 120 to 170, 50 cent range, let's call it a 145 premium for the put using midpoint. I'm going to sell that. Oops. So this is now a 145 maximum profit, 2.6% return, slightly lower break even. So again, if I'm able to get midpoint prices, it looks to me that the cash secured naked put on AMBA would give me better bang for the buck than selling the 57 strike covered call, assuming you've been uh, comparing midpoint prices to both, uh, Robert. So that's how I would use the tools quickly. Um, if I was in the covered call screen, as we saw before, I could go directly to that uh, profit and loss chart using the more information menu. We could go to profit and loss chart and then change from the covered call to the naked put and put in our own limitation for the uh, midpoint pricing, for example. Or, um, as I mentioned, of course, you could just do it on the chain and compare the time values, the percentage time values, percentage probabilities, and more just based on that information as well. Okay. Now, so that's going to cover covered calls and naked puts. Again, we already talked about uh, my preference would be using the option chain to look for stocks one at a time using those positions. The naked put search is going to look very similar to what we just saw on the covered call. The format and all strategies are the same. The only difference here, and you see similar stocks, 
for a weekly naked put search that you saw for a covered call. Why? Well, because if the premiums are available for a slightly in or out of the money covered call, you're probably going to see decent premiums for the slightly out of the money naked put as well. So we've got Amborella, Isis Pharmaceuticals, Cree, uh, VIPS, those were all in there in our covered call screen. MOS Mosaic was there. Medtronic is one as well. So I scroll down below the list of trades. We have the same four categories and same criteria. We can put in our time frame, our volatility. The returns slightly different. We can screen now for percent naked yield and percent to break even as opposed to percent if assigned and percent downside protection, which apply to a covered call. But all the same features, all the same functions are very similar. All that's changing now between the different criteria in the options sections and what we'd use to evaluate versus return from one strategy to the next. Point in case, let's go over to bull put credits. And let's go ahead and go into our search tool again for bull put credit positions. Here we have our listed trades. Um, we're testing probability, we're doing this in a webinar, but let me go to our default weekly bull puts. Since these are all three, ah, sorry about that, let's go to initial values. Okay, so we see some similar stocks here in this list, but I scroll down below the list of trades, our option expiration time frame. Subtle differences, and we can screen now for the implied volatility of the sell option, the buy option, and the ratio between the two, because we've got two working legs, uh, two working options, I should say. We're not looking for an option premium, we're looking for a net credit, and we're looking for a percent return instead of percent if assigned um, and percent naked yield that we saw in the other two strategies. We now have fields where we can screen for short option and long option delta and the delta ratio between the two, the bid ask spread for the short and long, so it just increases a little bit. And another feature that's available <coughs> in the spread positions that we wouldn't see in a covered call or a naked put or a long call is the strike differences. So I can tell the system I only want to see spreads or at least a five point difference in strike price, a 10 point difference in strike price and so forth. Uh, but in addition to that, everything else that we could use for stock technicals, Stock fundamentals and the lists are all the same. All we're changing now is some of the different variances of what we're looking for in the strategies. Long calls, well, we don't have a percent return. You have an infinite upside because it's a long call or long put. You don't have a calculated return, so that field's missing, but you'll see things such as the percent to double filter, uh, bid to ask spread again, delta, and so forth. Uh, for married puts, you'd be looking at percentage maximum risk. You can limit the maximum risk, but just like long calls, there's an unlimited upside, so there is no calculated percent return. And for calendar spreads, the time spreads, you can look at diagonal or horizontal spreads with the different settings, and this will allow you to put in the information you'd want to see, of course, for uh, the interaction between the short and the long option, the delta ratio between the two, the implied volatility ratio between the two, uh, total net debit, net debit limitation, and so forth. Okay? Now, for those of you that are doing spread trades, the 41% uh, of you, uh, what I'd really like you to get familiar with is using the spread chain tool. This is for one stock at a time, but the spread chain tool is very powerful. We can look at credit spreads, we can look at debit spreads, and we can look at parities all on the same page for one stock at a time. We're going to use Amborella again, to switch from Starbucks to our previous example, let's go to Amborella. And what I can do here is simply put in some uh, different criteria. I'm going to leave a two-point strike difference. I like that first. Uh, Securities that offer the 50 cent strike difference on the weeklies or the uh, dollar strike differences. I like the two point strikes. Minimum net credit, hey, let's bump that up to about 35 cents. I want my short call or my short put in my spread to be at least 1% out of the money. Minimum return, 3%. I want to increase this to a 70% probability above for the bull put or below for the bear call. And uh, let's go ahead and submit that. Um, but this selected the February 6th expiration. I want to go to January 9th. So I'm just going to toggle between those expiration dates. And here we have our combinations. On the left is our bear call spread. And we see here we have the combination of the 64-66, selling the 64 call, buying the 66. Using the midpoint prices, we could get 37 cent minimum net credit. We have a 78% probability, which yields a 22.7% return. Um, we could get a little bit more aggressive, go with the 63-65 bear call spread. Only a 72.7% probability, but still respectable. And a 52 cent net credit or 35.1% uh, return. Uh, it's uh, 52 cents off of a two point spread, so a high return. Over on our right are our bull puts, and of course here we see the 54-56 and the 53-55 with our probabilities. 
Now, the credit spread view, if you're interested in doing a bull put credit spread on Amborella, you don't necessarily need to use this credit spread view. But if you're doing iron condors on an index ETF, for example, or higher price stock, this is a great tool to use because you can set your probability for each leg, the range out of the money and the minimum net credit. And now I could say if I'm going to do an iron condor on Amborella, that's not a recommendation or suggestion. I probably wouldn't do that at all in this particular stock. Um, but what we'd be looking at here is I could say, okay, I want to use the one with the 78 probability of 64, 66, and I'm going to combine this with the 53, 55 with an 80% probability, and that would be my iron condor. We'd get 35 cents on the put spread, 52 for the bear call spread, so we'd have a total of 87 cent net credit. If I already know that my sentiment on Amborella is bullish, I was looking to open a bull put credit, I want to use this tab here in our tool for the put credit and call debit parity. I'm going to keep my spread width at two, of course. We're going to up our requirement to 35 cent net credit and keep our other ranges. Let's go ahead and submit that. All right, so we have five spreads that match. As before, here's my bull put credit spread potentials on the right and my bull call debit spread positions on the left. Now, why do I want to see both of these? Well, it's because from time to time, you want to compare the parity trade. Even though that I might be looking at a bull put credit spread on this particular stock position, if for whatever reason there's a higher return available significantly at the same strikes for my bull call debit, I may be more inclined to go with the debit spread. Even though I was hoping to generate a credit up front and have the position expire worthless, but if this was 4 or 5% higher than the bull put credit, I'd be tempted to go with the bull call debit because the risk reward is the same a little bit better for the debit spread. The probability is the same on the position. We're paying a debit, sure, but we might get a higher return. In this case, we see, though, however, all comparisons for the same strike favor the bull put credit spread, except for one case they're equal. But it's always nice to see that, that parity trade because if you were looking for a, a bullish spread and you wanted to do a put spread, there are some instances where the bull call debit might give you better bang for your buck, and you'd want to consider that even though you might have a portfolio of credit spread positions as well. So if I'm looking up a spread one stock at a time, I'm using the spread chain under the bull put or bear call menu. For long call options, well, we talked about that long option finder. That was one of the signature tools that we mentioned. So those of you that are buying calls, 29% of you that are buying calls, if I'm looking for a long call one stock at a time, I want to use the long option finder. Stick with our example, AMBA. We know the stock was trading at around $59. So let's say our expectation is the stock might reach $63 within the next 15 to 20 days. So we'll use an expiration. Let's go ahead and set this to the uh, 12th, okay? February 12th, 2015. And let's say I'm going to dump maybe $600, $500 into a long call purchase. So I've got my stock, my expected price, investment amount, and target date. Let's go ahead and submit that. In that brief instant, what this tool did is it went out and looked at every available call option on Amborella. It grabbed the current price of the options, and then it ran a Black-Scholes pricing model to calculate what those options would be worth if the stock did hit our target price on our target date. And so what we see here is that the February 56 call, currently trading at $5.80, if the stock hits $63 uh, on February 12th, and this is the 13th February expiration, our option would be worth $7. That makes sense, right? It's right at tr intrinsic value on the day before expiration. So this would yield a 20% return on our long call position. And it's rating it from highest theoretical return to lowest as well. And it's using the current implied volatility, but if you wanted to change the volatility because you're expecting a shift in the volatility, you could enter that in and resubmit it. Now, one of the reasons why we're not seeing a lot of high return, you might say, well, that's a decent return, it's only a $1.20, $1.20 return, a 20% return on a $5.80 call option, I'm sure I could do better percentage-wise with an out-of-the-money call that's a lower price. And you potentially could. Uh, or maybe even in the money you might see better premiums, but because we only put in an investment amount of $600, we're probably missing some of those strikes in around the $58, $59 range, even though I might have a lower premium, they have a higher time value. So if we increase that, Let's put our investment amount to double, it's 1,200. Still looking at a price increase of 63. The 56 call will still probably be the one we'd look at. Oh, no, it's actually the 50 call. The 50 call would yield a 25% return 
but the current price is 1040. So with only using $600, you couldn't get into it during that period. Uh, yes, it does. Um, John wanted to know, does your Black Shoals calculator account for dividends during the period? Yes, it accounts for dividends on the position. The Black Shoals pricing model is taking into account the five factors as well as what's going on with the current implied volatility. A lot of Black Shoals calculators just look at the historical volatility of the stock, a 20-day, 50-day, or 100-day. We do that as well, but we factor in the current implied volatility to see if there's any kind of speculation of an event coming up, such as earnings or other information, to run our Black Shoals pricing. Now, what we really do is take what's called the SIV, the Stocks Implied Volatility Index, into account when calculating this potential return. Okay, so that's with the long option finder. And for married puts and covered calls, looking one stock at a time, you're going to want to use the search by symbol. Unlike our covered call tool and the naked put tool, which only showed us one strike in and one strike out of the money, in other strategies, the married put, calendar call, collar, for example, the search by symbol tool will allow you to see multiple strikes. So I'm going to go ahead and select uh, all months. And I'm going to go ahead and look at more results. And let's go ahead and submit that. This is for the married put. So now we see the protection that we could have in place for every expiration two days out, nine days out to January 30th, uh, March expiration 58 days away, uh, February weekly, and so forth. If this is a long-term holding, I probably want to go out further. I might want to look as far as June, at least about 150 days out in time, following the radioactive trading techniques. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. My apologies. Let's go out to May. So let's go to all results. There we go. Okay, sorry about that, folks. So now we have the various strikes that I might look at going forward with the stock at 59.93. I might consider, oof, I might have to go to $70 to get under single-digit range. This has uh, too much volatility in it uh, to what I'd suit for my needs for a radioactive trade. Um, but use the search by symbol because it's not limited to that one strike in, one strike out of the money as we see with the covered call search by symbol tool and the naked put search by symbol tool as well. All right, well, so that gave us the opportunity today. We are about 12 minutes past the hour. Uh, that gave us the opportunity to showcase how we use these tools to identify positions in the search functionality and, and all the given strategies and, of course, the searching by symbol, what tools to use in a given strategy. Remember, if you have questions about how to use the different tools for a particular strategy, Click on that free webinars tab underneath the main home tab. This is actually a public page. You don't even need to be logged on to Power Options to view it. Uh, you can simply, I'll just send it to you in the chat window here. Sorry about that. There we go. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. There we go. Let me send that to you. Just go to poweropt.com slash webinars.asp at any time. You don't need to be logged in to access this menu. Um, but you see here that you've got some of that discussion uh, using the portfolio tools, which we didn't get to today. It's an important one to watch. Screening for new covered call positions, a little bit more in-depth into some of the criteria. Uh, a presentation on using the search tool for bull puts, and of course, bear calls are talked about in there as well. Uh, how to find the best long options on your stocks uh, and repair your sunken stocks. That goes into the um, stock repair tool we talked about at the beginning of the presentation. For those of you doing vertical spreads, uh, what is a vertical spread? You're probably already past that stage, but if you're just starting out and you're kind of branching out into vertical spreads, it's a great presentation to watch. And then one recently on managing your spread positions. It talks about the uh, four to five ways that we prefer to potentially manage a credit or a debit spread and discussion of using the Power Options tools to help you evaluate adjustments, rollout opportunities, and minimizing risk as well. And, of course, the options concepts, well, the Greeks, of course, and implied volatility, the double-edged sword. And then there's some uh, information that's uh, listed here in the uh, Q&A sessions from every Friday afternoon, the requested topics. We're probably, by the end of this month, beginning of next month, going to have a slew of different presentations, shorter presentations on a very, uh, I'm sorry, a variety of different topics there from our Q&A sessions. So you want to come visit that in February, the requested topics section, and see the different ones that are available for you there. Discussions, as we had today, on... Uh, you know, how to screen specifically for a covered call that matches this criteria, how to manage spread positions, so on and so forth as well. All right. Well, I don't see any more questions coming in. If you do have a last-minute question on any aspect of the Power Options tools or options trading, go ahead and send that to us. Uh, we'll stay on for a couple minutes here. Of course, we wanted to cover uh, why we feel that Power Options is going to work for you and it's going to help make 2015 a fantastic trading year. 
Well, we've got that patented search that's completely customizable for your needs and what you want to see in your view as well for the data columns and over 23 of the most commonly used option strategies. Once you identify those positions, you can do quickly further research and analyze those positions. The portfolio tools, which we didn't get into today, are very powerful. We not only, of course, show you the current returns, liquidation value versus future expiration value, but in every strategy, as you're tracking positions in the portfolio, you can view the position analysis page, and this will show you potential rollout opportunities or adjustments for your positions, um, <clears throat> where you can go ahead and make different adjustments. We do all the heavy lifting for rollout opportunities, whether it's a covered call, spread position, merry put, or even a long call, and you can view the positions side by side, your current position to the potential adjusted position to see which one best suits your needs and what you want going forward. In addition to that, we do offer toll-free customer support for our trial members, subscribers, either by phone or by email. And, of course, the variety of different help information that's there also um, is available. Um, let's see here. Uh, Bob wants to know, is this presentation being recorded? Yes, Bob, I did record today's presentation, and I will most likely replace uh, this one here from uh, June 6th. Oh, I'm sorry, you're not looking at that screen. <laughs> I apologize, Bob. Give me one second here. Fantastic. All right, so on that webinars page I mentioned, we'll replace this one from June 2014 with today's presentation as well. So in a couple hours, maybe by 4 or 5 p.m. Eastern time, uh, you'll be able to see that one listed here uh, at the top of the page, Bob. Okay. Uh, Elton, I'll uh, come back to your question in just a moment. And Ed asked, what happened to the radioactive trading presentations? They're mostly focused over at radioactivetrading.com now, and there's some other ones available on the Power Options YouTube channel. Um, we don't post the radioactive trading presentations here on Power Options. Uh, we've made them available at Radioactive Trading. But at any time, Ed, I can point you to where those are. Um, Oh, yeah, Gene asked about, I'm getting back to that one moment. Let me finish wrapping this up here, and then we'll get back to, uh, yeah, Ed, just send me an email uh, later on, or I'll look you up after the presentation, and I'll send you links to some of the uh, different ones that are available. I apologize uh, there. Let's see here. Sincerest apologies. I was on the screen here, and we had a question about the pricing screen, so let me pull that back up. Um, all right, our services are available. The 20-minute delayed service is available for $60 a month. It gives you access to all the tools and the different strategies plus the portfolio tool. 20-minute delayed quotes for only $60 per month. You can upgrade to the 20-minute data plus access to our back testing and historical suite of tools. So you can back test using the search feature that we saw, run searches um, historically for cover calls or whatever strategy matched that criteria that you created to see how it would have performed on a month-by-month -month basis, for example, uh, or look up historical chains as well, and that's $100 a month. So just $40 more, it's just an upgrade. You still get the 20-minute service, but just $40 more for the historical. We do offer a real-time service. Every time you submit the page or refresh the search, you're getting the numbers and calculations at that instant. That's $100 per month, and the real-time upgrade uh, with the historical is $140 per month. Right now, we're also offering a uh, newer service, just an end-of-day service, similar to the 20-minute delayed. You don't get the historical. You get access to all of the search and analysis tools and the portfolio tools for the uh, 23 different strategies, but it's only updated once a day at end of day. So you don't get updates throughout the day, and that's about $40 per month as well. And, of course, uh, just here before we go back to Elton's question a little bit more, I just want to navigate over uh, – not navigate, I'm sorry. I want to go through the next one. Upcoming free events will our open discussion uh, every Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, I host an open discussion presentation. I don't have any planned material. You can just bring your questions in and we field the questions. That's what usually ends up in that requested topics tab we saw on the webinars page. Um, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. we usually host a Power Options presentation on a specific tool or feature of Power Options. Uh, so next week we'll have another one. And Mondays maybe at around 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, um, Actually, I'm sorry, Monday's probably at around uh, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, maybe 4 p.m. We'll see what the timing is. We'll likely be hosting presentations that are strategy-specific, but that might move depending on other obligations. We'll have to take a look. And, of course, every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 noon Eastern Time, we host the uh, – Kurt hosts the Radioactive Trading Presentations. I believe this Thursday at 12 noon, he's doing a specific webinar for Blueprint and Fusion owners only. Um, but uh, Tuesday, next Tuesday at 12 noon, he'll be doing a Radioactive Trading Presentation. Elton, I'm going to take care of your question in just a second, but I want to make sure that everyone saw this before they leave for the presentation. If you think of a question later on, contact me at any time. Send me an email to support 
at poweropt.com. You can also reach us during market hours at 302-992-7971. Of course, for those of you that are trial members or subscribers, you can schedule one of those free coaching sessions at any time. There's no limit to the number of sessions that you can have, so it's not just one and done. Uh, during your trial, you can schedule a session at any time. The coaching session is essentially a 35 to 45 minute phone conversation with myself or Ernie. We will walk you through the tools on the site and answer any questions that you have. All right, so Elton wanted to know that in the custom spread tool, can double diagonals be done? Well, sure, but it's not a search filter, of course, Elton. It's just building positions on the fly. So if we go to custom spreads, and I was considering doing a double diagonal on Amberella. Why not? We've been focusing on that for a while. Well, what I'll start off with, let's type in our stock symbol, AMBA. I'm going to look at view options. Now this doesn't give us any of the data that we'd want to know, but let's say I'm going to do a double diagonal with the standard March expiration, which is about 60 days out in time. We know the stock's at 59.93, so what I might do is let's say I'm going to go ahead and buy the 70 call, deep out of the money call, and at the same time buy the 45 call. Well, it's a $60 stock roughly, so 10 points out. Let's use the 50 strike put. Okay, so those are going to be our buy options. Uh, I could do this one, the 70 call, let's try midpoint at 225 roughly, so I'm going to buy one at 225, and we're going to buy this uh, out of the money put, uh, 245 to $3, so we're looking at 55 cents here, so let's call it an even 30 cents there roughly, so 275. All right, now we want to sell sort of the at the money, or maybe out of the money near term positions against it as well. So let's go to January 30th. I'm sorry, nine days out. Let's see, did the, uh, I might look to sell the um, 60 or 60 and a half strike, probably a 61 strike call. So let's call that 185, decent premiums. The earnings have to be coming up between these two, so it's not really a position I'd want to be in for an iron condor or double diagonal in this situation. I'm going to go ahead and use the 59 put. Um, 16, yeah, let's use the 59 put, 195 to 255, even 60 cents, let's call it 225. Okay, sell one at 2.25. Okay, so this is going to be an interesting spread, I can already tell. So let's go ahead and submit that. If I did this correctly, yeah, there's our double diagonal. Pretty decent 10-point break even, and this profit and loss chart we're seeing, of course, is to February expiration. Uh, I'm sorry, no, I selected January 30th, my apologies, so the January 30th expiration, uh, the curved red line is showing us the halfway point at the profit and loss, uh, small window to maximum profit roughly between our two strike prices, so about two points there for the next nine days series, total debit, very good, only 90 cents, but we are risking 10 times the total debit there. Um, Uh, I'm sorry, we're risking 10 times the total debit. We do have a reasonable maximum profit, uh, about a third of the uh, max, oh, sorry, a third of the max risk there. So I don't know if you'd want to do further ones out in time than that, but that's how you do it on the fly, Elton, is you just have to know the stock already, kind of know the strike range, and then build them on the fly. Uh, Bob asks again, or a different question, I'm sorry, Bob asks, is there a video with this discussion? Yeah, I'm still recording this, so when I post that intro, position, I might crop it and put this uh, custom spread one, another one, but I think I'll leave it in there for now, Bob, so this discussion and the whole presentation will be available once again in that uh, webinar presentation in the webinar field. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. My sincerest apologies. Uh, let's run through that again. Okay, so let's clear these out. What I did is I went to the custom spread tool, Elton. Sincerely apologize for that. I will crop that part out now that you mention it. <laughs> All right, so we want to create a double diagonal. I have to know the stock already because we don't have any search filters in the custom spread view. So we'll go to view options as we did before. I'm going to go out to March expiration, about 60 days. And I decided to go ahead and, um, I'm sorry, we were going to select the, uh, the buy options. I did the 65 call. No, I didn't. There we go. Let's try that again. Okay, so we're going to use the 70 call, about 10 points out of the money and the 50 strike put for our double diagonal. And we tried to put in the midpoint here, so we looked at 225 for the buy on the call, and we put in roughly about, uh, was it 275 for the put. Now naturally this leg, fantastic, two points. All right, let's submit that. Now of course without the other legs, 
this is just going to be an in the money long strangle or an out of the money long strangle position. We bought a 70 call, bought a 50 put, stock's trading right at about $60 per share. Now what we want to do is we want to sell the nearer term at or slightly out of the monies. So we'll go to January 30th. We're going to go a little bit out of the money, so we're going to use the 61 call, one point out of the money, and the 59 put. We're looking at a uh, bid roughly of 185 for the 61 call. Midpoint price, getting closer to midpoint, we use 185. And for our short put, uh, I think we put in 220. Yeah, 225. All right, so let's go ahead and submit that. Now, that's the double diagonal graph I was wanting to show you instead of the blue screen with the wrap-up on the presentation. So, Elton, this is the tool that I use when I'm trying to build those kind of double diagonals or other positions. You just have to know the stock because we don't have any information um, in this custom spread tool. It's just building positions on the fly. But if you wanted to delve deeper, of course, and take a look individually at the option research tool to see the delta of each individual option, the applied volatility, and then manually do the implied volatility ratios, you could also, one way that I've talked to customers, if they wanted to create a double diagonal, is you could uh, use the long strangle screen, for example, or the short strangle screen. In the short strangle, you'd identify your short options up front, the two short legs that you wanted to use based on what premium you wanted for the short option and maybe the implied volatility of just a short call and the short put, and then link to the profit and loss chart, and then add in the extra legs to see which one gives you the risk-reward profile that best suits your needs. Uh, but you don't have that scan available for the premium. Okay, so sorry about that for not having the presentation, not having this monitor shown when I was doing a double diagonal discussion, but that's uh, the tool that I would use there and how to use the custom spread tool, Elton, to build and evaluate diagonal spreads or other positions that might not be available as a specific strategy tab. All right, so let's go back now. Once again, if you think of any questions later, go ahead and send me an email to support at powerup.com. Remember, you can also call us during market hours at 302-992-7971. And there's contact links on the bottom of every Power Options page. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me this afternoon. I hope you all enjoyed the presentation. I hope to see you at one of our next webinars upcoming in the near future. Take care, everyone. Have a happy trading week. Good night.